Yes, Square Enix! Yes! Finally! Oh, man! In the last video, I said it's all on Square's shoulders to save the day, and they came out swinging! I love that conference! That is by far the best one. I'm sorry, Microsoft. Get on out of here! As much as I love me some Keanu Reeves, and I did enjoy that event still, that event from Square Enix is by far the best event we've had this year, and honestly, probably one of the best events Square Enix has had in a long time. I can't really remember their events all that well, which is probably why this one was their best. <laughs> Like, the entire first half of this event was just insane on fire every single second. And then it slowed down around the middle and picked up around the end, but all in all, it was a very solid and enjoyable conference. Why, do you ask? Well, I'm gonna go through the entire event. I'm not missing a single thing because I loved it all. But, long story short, gameplay, new announcements, exciting things, stealth drops on the Nintendo Switch, and so much more. This has been an incredible last few days, and I am drawing close to the end of my energy levels, especially for today. But I do want to say, I'm going to put down all of these great Square Enix games for a second, so I can go back and talk about Ubisoft, unfortunately, for a moment. As I'm sure a lot of you saw, I uploaded a little one-minute video on the channel, which I'm eventually going to delete whenever Ubisoft finally reinstates my ability to livestream. Why does Ubisoft have the ability to disable that? I don't know. I honestly don't know. And this, I don't even know if I'm looking at Ubisoft or I'm looking at YouTube more. Why does Ubisoft have the ability to take away my live streaming? Because here's the thing, if you get a copyright strike on your channel, you lose the ability to live stream for up to six months. But I didn't get a strike. In fact, none of us that streamed Ubisoft's event got a strike on our channel. No, it's not that. We all got our streams claimed. Trust me, Ubisoft claimed our streams ten times over. They want that juicy cash, which is fine. It's their event. All I was doing was reacting to it. Falls under fair use in, in ways, but for the most part, I don't need the money for that, Ubisoft. If you really want my pennies, take them. I don't know why you need them, honestly. You're, I mean, you, you look like you're doing well. <laughs> But regardless of that, I didn't get a strike or a claim. No, Ubisoft just saw that I was streaming their event and went, Nah, you can't do that anymore. Completely removed my ability to stream, along with Spawnwave, uh, Nintendo Prime, and uh, just anyone. A every anyone and everyone that streamed. They did reply to my tweet and they said they were working on it. I don't know what there is to work on. Thank you to everyone that joined me on Twitch instead. Hopefully we don't have to be there tomorrow. As much as Twitch is a fine platform, it's just not where I am. I am on YouTube, but if we have to, we have to. And you can thank Ubisoft. With all that being said, we're not here to talk about a company that has no idea how to put on an entertaining conference at E3. We're here to talk about a company that can do that in spades, and that is Square Enix. So let's get started. As soon as their event started, Final Fantasy VII exploded onto our screens, and I think everyone was expecting them to start with that. I am not even a nostalgia fan of Final Fantasy VII. I appreciate and like the game, but I didn't play it and finish it when I was young, so I don't have that nostalgia. And even I was losing my mind, and it's just so hype. Like, listening to everyone in the crowd going bananas. I love this feeling. It is so great. It's just that love for video games. And this is how you show off a game at E3, by the way. Not only a ton of gameplay, but they broke down the gameplay. They had someone there on stage explaining what was going on, breaking down all the gameplay elements and all the little fine details you might miss. And then they just let a huge fight with a giant mech play out. And now that you've learned a lot of these things, you get to see them in action as well as a bunch of other things you didn't know about or expect. And it was just so freaking cool and hype and they, it was like maybe 20 minutes was just that and every second was amazing so now the bar was set pretty high and I was interested to see what direction it was going to go in from here oh and we already know the release date but they did show us what comes with the game as well as a really cool looking figure on the bike so that's great 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 awesome 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 and then they jumped straight into the Life is Strange 2 trailer that game started to release last year late last year and I'm guessing like all the chapters are out now so it kind of gave you a full look at the game Little anticlimactic after all that Final Fantasy 7 buzz and hype, but I do love Life is Strange, so that was just cool to see again, I guess. There was a lot of different Final Fantasy throughout this event. The next one was Crystal Chronicles. I really do like this game. I had it on GameCube, I loved it. I never finished it, so I'm excited to dive back into it in this remastered version of it that is coming to Switch and other places, and it has online co-op too, which I really love that. And of course, they showed us that, as well as gameplay and a bunch of stuff of 
about the game. We got a trailer for Octopath. It's one that we've already seen before, but they were just using it as a way to announce that it's going to PC. And more people get to play the game. I, I guess that's not a bad thing. It's an absolutely beautiful game. And if you haven't played it before and you intend on playing it on PC, then just have fun with it. However, I'll admit I'm a little salty about it not being a Switch exclusive anymore. It was one of our best ones, one of our only ones that wasn't first party and now it's going on PC. I feel protective about that in a weird way, but fine, it's whatever. Enjoy it, PC gamers. My excitement level went up about five notches at this point as they showcased Last Remnant Remastered. Now, I did dabble with this game back in the day. I believe it is actually behind me here somewhere. I can't be bothered trying to find it, but I never really played it. So seeing that wasn't that all that exciting in general, other than, oh, maybe I can play it now. But then they did something that I just love oh so much, a stealth drop on the Switch. I'm a sucker for that. I see something really cool. There it is right there already tonight. Fine, I'm in. And if I wasn't already over the edge bubbling with excitement, <laughs> Dragon Quest Builders 2, if you're new around here, and there's a good likelihood of that since the channel's got almost 5,000 new subscribers today alone. I do not know what is happening right now, but keep it up, guys. Share the video with friends and family, smash that like button, and subscribe. I'm along for the ride, and I'm loving every second of it. If you're new around here, I loved Dragon Quest Builders. Loved, loved, friggin' adored. And I usually don't like crafting games, and I'm usually not super into, like, harvesting games. And Dragon Quest Builders kind of merges those two genres and slices an action RPG in the middle of it, and I just happened to play it on Switch because, hey, it was on Switch, and I fell in love with it. As I said, made a whole video about it that kind of blew up, actually, and got a bunch of you playing it. So I feel like I have a connection with this game series now, and I've been really excited for this one, and again, this is how you show a game with its gameplay. They broke down all the different elements, again, from the harvesting, to the combat, to the building, the online aspect. That's what I'm most excited for. Like, this game is seriously, it looks Looks like the last game on crack. Everything that you could do in the last game, they, they turned it up to 11, and then they added in so much extra content. And the one I am most excited for is the online aspect. Being able to have three other friends in my world or go into their worlds and just build things together, lounging around on deck chairs apparently at the top of our structures with train tracks going around. It just looks so good. This game just has that right splice of so many different elements, and I love it. And I said that a bunch of times, but I, that's how much I do love it. <laughs> oh, and it's coming out next month. You can already pre-order it on your Switch, but I'm going to wait for that physical. Unless it doesn't get that physical right away, I should look into that. Dragon Quest VIII, we already knew about that coming to Switch, and it looks incredible. I can't wait. It releases very soon. Now, we can all be honest. <laughs> about now is when it started to die down a little bit. My hype started to curve. It brought it back near the end of the event, but around about here, we saw a cutesy looking little car game. Then there was a indie Call of Duty looking game. It was around about now in the event that Ubisoft actually replied to me on Twitter. So I was kind of distracted with all that anyway. We saw a very early look at some Kingdom Hearts 3 DLC. Apparently it wasn't even voiced over yet. They just had to use text for it, which was kind of weird and disjointed for me, but even though it's super early in development, we still saw gameplay. We are seeing gameplay for everything in this event. We got a bunch of Final Fantasy Online talk. I don't play Final Fantasy Online. A bunch of people in the chat were trying to convince me to get into it. Apparently, there's never a bad time to get into it. And just this one DLC add-on pack looked like it was filled with so much content. So we did get a couple of DLC things there back-to-back. -back, but so far, those were the only ones. The rest have been game announcements. And it pretty much continues like that from here, too. And then we saw a bunch of dying light 2. Now was it cinematic or was it gameplay? Let's spin the wheel and find out. Never mind, we're in Square Enix's event, so of course it was gameplay. They're doing it right. <laughs> then apparently there's a bunch of retro goodness coming to Switch in the form of the Romancing Saga being ported to it, possibly remastered. I was again checking Twitter and seeing if I had my live streaming back on YouTube. Yeah, I got distracted here and there in this event and this was one of them, but I will say gameplay. All gameplay and it's coming to Switch. Actually, like half of these games I'm talking about are going to Switch and dropping on Switch tonight or very soon. So yeah, I, maybe I'm biased, but this was a great event. Man, I need to keep saying that. Now the next thing was Outsiders and this was our first true cinematic only look at a game, but it was the first time they're announcing it. So not only do they get a pass for that, 
but they did it right, man. As soon as this cinematic trailer ended, and by the way, that trailer looked great. And going into it with the knowledge that it's developed by the same team that did uh, Gears of War Judgment, which w was okay, but Bulletstorm, which was fantastic, I was already more than willing to give it a chance. But then after the trailer, we got a look at the dev team in their offices talking about the game and what it is they hope to achieve and what kind of game it is. But in between, we saw little snippets here and there of gameplay and monsters and creatures and we can kind of start to build an image of how the game is played without actually seeing gameplay. And honestly, for the first time something is announced, that was a really good way of building up hype and giving us a somewhat solid image of the game without actually being able to see the game. And I appreciated that a lot. Really great. Good job. I mean, I'm just, I just, I'm just saying. <laughs> Oni Naki, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, it's made by Tokyo RPG Factory, the same people behind the beautiful I Am Setsuna, which I have right here and I was holding earlier in this video, as well as Lost Sphere. It's their new game and we saw gameplay and it looked really good. At this point, they're just a studio that you don't want to miss out on one of their games. So again, at this point, we're on the excitement up curve again and we got a Final Fantasy VIII remaster. I will admit, when I saw that pop up, I was like, oh, are they announcing that they are redoing it the same way they did 7? Because if they're doing 7 and they're doing 8, they're most likely going to get around to 9. And 9 is my favorite Final Fantasy and actually my favorite RPG of all time. Sadly, it wasn't a straight remake. It was a remaster the same way that 7 and 9 got remastered. And then, you know, they're on the Switch now. So we can play that on the Switch, which is great. <laughs> Not not fantastic, but good. <laughs> now, throughout this event, people were really worrying me because they were leaving comments in the chat saying the Avengers game turned out to be a mobile game, like something leaked somewhere they found out about. Wasn't the case. We finally got a look at it. The first thing we saw kind of gave you a feeling it was going to be similar to something like the Spider-Man game on PlayStation 4, where you have this larger-than-life adventure that you maybe could play in single-player offline, but you could also invite your friends in or do co-op, and it's very story-driven, and these big action set pieces and then they started talking about the game though and they mentioned how it was online and there was an ever-growing roster of characters and there was ever-growing amounts of places to explore and all of that was free and actually everything they were saying was great no microtransactions no loot boxes that got a big cheer I still think it's disappointing that we were at a position in gaming where people actually cheer for something like that but regardless all of that talk made me realize oh this game is probably like Anthem but it's Avengers themed and hopefully good, <laughs> unlike Anthem. And I'm down. But they do have some great talent behind it. They had a bunch of really cool voice actors and actresses and I, I don't know the ones on the middle couch. The chat was going crazy for a couple of them. I think the chick, someone told me that she did the Kid Trunks voice. But for me, I am actually a huge fan of not only Troy Baker, but Nolan North and here they both are. And that was Square Enix's fantastic event. And the reason why Square Enix has won, hands down, is because fans of Square Enix Fans of the people putting on the conference, you left excited for something. Probably many things that Square Enix has their hands in. And for the most part, you can't say that about the other events. Ubisoft. What did Ubisoft, hardcore Ubisoft fans, what did they leave with? Same with Bethesda and same with Microsoft. Not much, little to nothing, maybe one game if they're lucky. But Square fans, like myself, and maybe you watching this, we left with a lot. More than I can name. I just went through them all and I'm not gonna do it again, but we left with a lot. Whether it was announcements or gameplay or just hype and things to play tonight even. Square Enix, you just won. Sadly, Nintendo is gonna beat you. But <laughs> for the next 24 hours, Square Enix, you are the king and queen of E3. And I'm crowning you that, so there you go. I really, really needed that after Ubisoft stabbed me in the back. 500,000 new subscribers, plus 600,000. If you want to join the ever-growing family and help me etch even closer to that 1 million goal, you know what you have to do. Hit and flip all over that subscribe button and that bell with notifications turned on. I am so hyped up. I don't know how I'm going to sleep tonight. Who am I kidding? I'm going to pass out like a rock. All right, guys. Ugh. See you tomorrow for Nintendo. Get ready.